Welcome to the Professional Website Investor Podcast, the show where we talk about what it takes to successfully buy, operate, scale, and sell a thriving e-commerce business. When it comes to doing business online, we believe that buying an existing website is far superior to building one from scratch. So if you're a career professional who's looking to become an e-commerce store owner, listening to this show will give you the knowledge, tools, and community support you need to be successful. I'm your host, Ryan Cowden. And this week, we're joined by Ian Bond from ProfessionalWebsiteInvestors.com. In this episode of the Professional Website Investor Podcast, Ian and I discuss six different online business models and how you should evaluate each one. On the previous episode of the Professional Website Investor Podcast, Ian Bond introduced a new framework for evaluating online business models. His seven-tiered pyramid contained a variety of factors pertaining to time commitment, scalability, and financial gain. It's a helpful framework for any investor who's looking for a common framework to assess the various online business models. Today, we get practical and use that framework to analyze six different business models. You'll hear how Ian assesses his investments and evaluates the risks and rewards of each type of online business. It will also provide a good example of how to use Ian's framework in your own evaluation of websites and business models. On this episode, you'll hear Ian's description and analysis of six different business models. First, we'll discuss low-ticket dropshipping. This model received the lowest score in our rankings due to low profit margins and the constant need to drive high amounts of traffic to your website. Second, we'll discuss software as a service, abbreviated as SaaS. While SaaS businesses do generate recurring income, they require the highest amount of content-specific and technological knowledge you need to have in order to run your business well. Third, we'll cover advertising, which includes AdSense and paid ads to generate revenue. Low profit margins keep this model lower on our list, but it can work if you have the right content. Fourth, we'll cover the massively popular Fulfilled by Amazon, abbreviated as Amazon FBA, business model. This is a popular model because Amazon does a lot of the work for you in terms of storing products and exposing you to traffic, but you have to pay Amazon for the storage, and it is hard to add value to the types of goods you will be selling on Amazon. Fifth, we'll talk about affiliate marketing. Affiliate marketing is similar to advertising business but the profit margins are higher and there is a low level of customer service required. However, you are limited in the amount your business can grow, and a lot depends on who you are marketing for. The final business model, which got a score of 9 out of 10, is high-ticket dropshipping. While high-ticket dropshipping is not the most popular model these days, that does provide less competition for you to get started, and it provides a good dollar margin and access to high-quality products that people still need. If you're looking for some detailed analysis of the current online business models in the market, then this is one episode you won't want to miss. There's a lot of actionable advice in this episode, so grab something to write with because you're going to want to take notes. As always, I'll be back on the other side to wrap up any loose ends. So without any further ado, here's my conversation with Ian Bond. All right, Ian Bond, welcome back to the show. It's great to see you. Yeah, Ryan, second time here, a little power outage the last time. Great Great to see you again. Yeah, great. Take two. Great to, uh, great to see you again and look forward to doing this again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It should be fun. Um, so this is actually part two. Um, I think we should say something to our listeners about the episode that we recorded previously um, and then sure. talk about what we're doing today. So why do you want to recap what we talked about last week? Yeah. So um, on our website, professionalwebsiteinvestors.com, we've published now an infographic and the infographic has kind of two component pieces. One is a framework for thinking about um, how to value and how to look at online business models. And we have uh, different um, um, pieces of the framework that allow you uh, different ways to think about it. It's you know, supposed to be a thought starter, certainly not all inclusive. And then this is the second piece where we're going to actually discuss uh, from, the pers- from my perspective, um, how, uh, you know, I look at valuing, um, uh, different, this, you know, six very specific online business models. Now, um, you know, my background, uh, is as a, a career professional corporate executive. And, you know, I got into the online business world when I was 58. So this is my take. Somebody that has a different background can certainly have a different take, but I hope people will find this to be valuable. And, um, you know, this is kind of, at least five years into this journey, this is you know kind of something that I hope that um, that I could put out there that people can profit from. Okay, great. 
Well, we're going to be diving into some really specific business models today. Um, so the first one that we have um, that you had listed was low ticket drop shipping, uh, which you gave a score of five out of a possible 10. Is that correct? I gave it as five out of 10 and I should have gone lower. I made oh. a huge mistake. Uh, this is, you know, that's five is way too five high. Five and dropping. Yeah. yeah. Five and dropping. Oh, okay. I wish I could re-rate that, but okay. the ink is dry already. Okay. So low ticket, low ticket, ticket drop shipping, uh, Ryan, is where you source from suppliers things that sell certainly generally less than $100. We bought a site that sold wedding paraphernalia. That most of it was below fifty dollars, mm -hmm. and because you're sourcing, you know, in our case, we had a few thousand products, um, all low price, um, you know, from suppliers. You have very high percentage margins and very low uh, dollar margins. Oh, and it's a horrible business model. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. So so I, so the. Um... Some of the pros that you listed were that there's a high resale value and there's a high quantity of websites out there. Um, yeah, well, should there, there, we, if, we, if we listed it as a higher resale value, that, that, that has to be idiosyncratic to the ones that actually work because okay. there, shouldn't, there shouldn't be a, a high resale value you know, generally expected. Uh, look, the reality is that this business model is incredibly hard to execute on for one very simple reason, which is when you have a large number of products that you uh, earn, you know, small dollar margins on, you have neither the ability to drive paid traffic because you're not earning dollar, lots of dollars per sale, and you have a very diffuse number of products, so you're not able to really focus your SEO. And so traffic is a huge problem for you, and that's the reason that I don't like the, the, the business model. And to be honest with you, the reality is that this world is going to Amazon. And so um, to be selling this independently on a website as opposed through uh, Amazon, um, you know, uh, you know, I think makes it a very difficult business model to, to execute. So, you know, we've had, we, we, we've, we've taken our lumps in this one and that's why I'm so, uh, so circumspect about it. So, Horrible business model. Call me if you want to buy one. Okay, so we can learn from your mistakes today. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Okay. So the next one you had up on on the rankings above that was software as a service, which you ranked as a six um, yeah. out of ten. Um, and it's yeah. Do you want to say something about the the SaaS sure. S A S S model? Yeah, yeah. So you know, this is uh, you know, I think I'll probably be a bit of a lightning rod, and there's this you know rabid community of people that think they should own SaaS. Uh, sites and I think they're delusional. I've said it, and they mostly have technology degrees. They're nerds. And look, the pro is recurring income. Now, you know, read John Warlow's book, The Automatic Customer. There's lots of ways to get recurring income. You know, I think what people are missing with SaaS sites, in addition to being few and far between, and they're not low price, the ones I'm talking about is that you know most people think about this as being a technology driven um, uh, business model which it is but if you don't know what problem you're solving for the consumer you have no business buying one all right yeah. i'm i'm in the middle in my day job of evaluating for our business which is a wealth asset management business you know we're looking at nine different vendors we're spending all day looking at what our needs are that these vendors have. And I consider myself over three dozen years, you know, to be pretty good at this. And I'm seeing a lot of very good pitches. If you don't have deep domain expertise in the product you're solving, forget about the, the, uh, the technology that's behind it. I don't care if you spent 20 years at IBM. You, you know, you don't belong buying, you know, this business model or this, you know, the business that you're going to see if you can find one. So there are no cheap SaaS businesses out there. They're not a lot to begin with. And so, you know, that's one piece of the puzzle. Is, and the other piece of the puzzle is, um, and we alluded to this in, in our last podcast, is that the technical support, which requires a lot of technical expertise, um, the customer support is, is, is brutal. So you've, you've, you've got 
high paid people that are going to have to hook people up to the service uh, in order to get to earn that recurring revenue model. So, um, you know, I know that for a lot of people, this is the holy grail, but I would tell you that there's easier ways to make a dollar. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Well, let's just keep moving up the rankings here. Uh, you've got this advertising model that comes in with a score of six and a half. And yeah. uh, it, it looks like, for, according to your rankings, that this is the easiest model to scale and grow. Um, do you want to say a little bit about kind of on the upside? Why is this such an easy product to scale? Yeah. So, you know, if you're a buyer of, a, of an online business and you're able to find a, a, a content site, that ranks for a lot of keywords where somebody's really done the work and done a great job and has effective backlinks. And, you know, notwithstanding the fact that Google changes their, their, their algorithm, you know, by the moment, um, you know, you have the ability to look at a long history, uh, and a high, like a long history of operation and a high likelihood that the, the content and you can read the content that the high, high content is good quality. And it's going to continue to drive traffic, and you know that's the good news. So you you've got a con, you've got a traffic strategy. You know probably the detraction from this, which you know we talked about in our our last episode, is that you're you're paying you know uh, you're paying you're you're getting people to come to your site, and you're only collecting you know a a, a small uh, dollar per click or a fraction of a dollar per click, and that's the that's the detraction. So you've 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 purchased a site where somebody's solved for getting you the traffic, but unfortunately, your monetization model is weak. Now, to scale it is a dream because you basically fall asleep and it works for you. So, yes, you're right. That's 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 certainly the upside. So it makes money for you, but it's hard to get money from the clicks. Is that? Yeah, well, no. You 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 you're you're going to get clicks. You're just not going to get paid a lot for a lot of money. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So this yeah. is from you're trying to get people to click on ads, basically, and you get money. Yes, for exactly. Ads. Okay. Yeah. So you know, you know, look, uh, yeah, you'll see as we go through this. Yeah. You know, I really don't want people to leave my website when I get them there. Okay. So you know, yeah. I want them to spend money on my website. Right. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, all right. Well, so the next one we're starting to get up into the sevens here. Um, the fulfilled by Amazon model, which is, as you point out, is becoming much more popular. Um, it's got a high resale value and it's got a low barrier to entry. So, uh, for people who are interested in this, it does have a good score from you. Um, what are the, what are the reasons why someone might do a fulfilled by Amazon model? Yeah. So, you know, this is the darling right now. FBA is the darling out there and there's lots of, lots of these sites out there. And, you know, the good news is that, um, you know, over forty billion dollars of Amazon's revenue last year came from third-party sellers, um, and Amazon is pushing um, suppliers to actually list their products. So even incumbent suppliers are being told that Amazon's not going to order from you. They're saying, "No, you're going to have to go put things in Amazon's warehouse." So Amazon's embracing this model, and you know they do all the work for you, and they're Amazon. So you know that you know that's you know that's awesome. Um, and, you know, they, you know, you know, have a massive traffic source. So, you know, that's, you know, really the, the, uh, good news. Um, you know, the bad news is that this is generally at the low end of the value chain. So the stuff you sell, you know, without being, you know, uh, you know, too, uh, derogatory is generally cheap stuff that's $9 to, Sixty nine, seventy nine dollars, and you know can be knocked off uh, either by Amazon or you know uh, oftentimes now you know Chinese manufacturers are knocking off um, products that uh, they see their customers being successful with, and they're going directly to Amazon. So that's a big worry. So yeah. you know I don't think a lot, Ryan, of these commodity type businesses, and yet you know. These sites are immensely poss- uh, profitable, and I'm, you know, intrigued in looking at them myself. So, okay. you know, okay, never, ne- never say never. Right, okay. right. So there's good profit, but the downside would be: is it is it the level of competition? Is that the problem? You know, I I, I think there's a you know for me there's you know kind of a, a lack of appeal to sell things that are on the shelves in Walmart, and you know. 
I don't understand silicone barbecue gloves any better than the next guy okay. or cheaper stuff. Yeah. Um, you have very little ability to add value to those equations, to those products in terms of kind of the, the content that you can deliver to people or the help that you can provide through advice or, or other means. Okay. Um, and you know, so that, that just makes it less, you know, less exciting for me. Yeah. Um, uh, now the promise with, uh, FBA, which I think is way overhyped is everybody's out trying to build a brand. Okay. And probably 1.4% of the people are going to succeed at that. And everyone else is not going to build a brand and they're just going to sell their five or 10 or 35 SKUs. And, you know, look, um, uh, you know, I wish everyone the best in that endeavor. And, you know, it's a, certainly a noble pursuit. You know, look, the reality is that you can be incredibly successful, not have a brand, but you're going to have to stay ahead of the competition. And, uh, you know, in this price range and whether the competition is other Amazon folks, uh, like you, or if it's the Chinese uh, manufacturers or it's Amazon themselves, you know, it's going to be competitive. And yeah. by the way, these are all unbranded products. Okay. There's no brand. So for all of these Amazon FBA stores, these are unbranded products. The by and large, yeah. there's, okay. you know, by and large, no one's ever heard of any of these brands. Okay. I mean, they have, they have product names, but no one knows the, gotcha. the brands. Of them. So people, yeah. okay. Okay. Gotcha. And then one more con that you listed real quick was, was just the cost of keeping your inventory with Amazon, right? You have to pay for them. Yeah. Yeah. So, the you know, there's something. Yeah, yeah, the, the old joke in the e-commerce world is that you've never met a, uh, uh, you know, a, a, an FBA guy that wasn't broke because, you know, all of their money goes back into inventory. And so the one day that the FBA guy is wealthy is the day he sells the store. The rest of the time he's dumping money, he or she, or dumping money into inventory. And so they're, they're perennially broke. It's horribly capital inefficient. Okay. Okay. Great. All right. Well, we'll move up the scale a little bit here. We'll go to the affiliate marketing, which has a score of 7.5. So definitely getting up into a little bit higher here. Um, let's define affiliate marketing real quick. What what does that look like? Yeah. So so that's where you're you're uh, somehow uh, adding value um, through either your personal experience or or through the experience of others to sell uh, someone else's product. All right. So that could be a course you took or a product that you endorse. And, you know, kind of at the low end of the spectrum, you have people that have review sites for um, for products that are sold on Amazon. That's Amazon affiliates. And at the high end, which is really where I'm more intrigued, you have people doing reviews of higher end um, uh, products. Uh, and then they have affiliate relationships where they get paid, uh, hopefully large dollar, uh, large dollars in affiliate commissions for those sales. And so what I'm really intrigued by when I look at content related sites is their ability, uh, potentially to have affiliate relationships where you can monetize better than AdSense. And that would work even for um, you know, even lower affiliate commission opportunities. But I'm particularly intrigued with ones where there's, you know, proven products where, um, there are sites that act as affiliates for those products that deliver good advice, good, um, perspective, and then drive people to a, a sales page, um, for a, 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 a product where there's a high commission. Okay. And so, uh, you know, there you have, Ryan, you know, kind of two weapons, two traffic weapons. You know, one is you can, with higher higher dollar margins, as we said in the last episode, you can actually run paid traffic. And then obviously you have uh, all of your content, your SEO related traffic that you can drive to those sites. And so you, you know, you have kind of the best of both worlds from traffic. And then, you know, as you know, I like high dollar margin uh, situations. Right, right. So, so according to that pyramid that you set up, it 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 runs well according to it's got a low level of customer support, um, high dollar margins. Um, 
So when you're engaging in this business model, what, what is the focus of your time and your energy? Where's most of your work going if you're doing affiliate marketing? Uh, if you're doing affiliate marketing, you're really looking for different ways to um, refine the conversation around the affiliate offer. And, you know, you're always thinking about what the problem is that you're solving. Usually the, um, the product that you're referring people to is morphing and changing. And so what you're doing is you're changing. It's never static. What you're doing is making sure that you're, uh, current in, you know, kind of the content, the approach, the nuances that have evolved over time. And, and, you know, that's the, that's the upkeep. And, you know, uh, you know, you mentioned one of the positives, which is, you know, kind of a, uh, the customer service is really minimal. That's really left to the people that ultimately sell the product. So that's the plus. And, you know, your time is your own because you just have to make sure you get the work done in terms of, uh, you know, um, perceiving and, and, and tackling the issues around whatever it, the problem is that you're solving for people. Yeah. Okay. And. And positioning the product correctly. Great. Okay. So then let's talk about the the downsides, though. Um, so it's seven point five. It's not your highest ranked business model. Yeah. Um, what are the downsides of the uh, affiliate marketing model? You know, it, it it gets it gets close, but you know, you're relatively limited when you know you're generally you know uh, 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 looking at uh, you know a product or maybe a, a small suite of products. So you're generally limited in terms of the size that you can be. Um, you know, so, you know, certainly that's a, a problem. Um, you know, it's relatively hard to, to scale. Uh, you know, it's a content strategy, so it's relatively hard to scale and it has to be high quality content. You are tied to the, the, you know, kind of the fortunes of the, the product that you're referring people to. So you have a few limitations, but, you know, I don't want to detract too much. From you know the, the the strategy because I do rank it highly. Okay, great. Um, so we just have a couple minutes left, and I and I know that we're going to do an entire episode on high ticket drop shipping. But um, I think as we as we kind of wrap things up, let's just point to the the top the top of the pyramid here. And um, <laughs> is there just maybe like a teaser you could point out as to why high ticket drop shipping made the top of your list before we sign off? Yeah. Yeah, so as you mentioned, we're about to to dive into this in more detail. But you know, look, um, let's just tick through some of the things that we've mentioned. You know, we have high dollar, dollar margins. We have the ability to have diversified traffic. You're going to be focused on a relatively few number of items that pay a high uh, dollar price. You do have branded suppliers um, because you're in higher dollar offers. Um, you have the ability to add real value to, to people in their purchases. Yeah. And, um, I, I think those things are very powerful. Okay. Now the, 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 and, and, and I'll come back. I have one more to add to this in a moment, sure. uh, which is counterintuitive, but the cons that most people would say, you know, the two biggest ones would be, uh, margins are crummy. So generally, you're working for 10 to 15 percent net margins in 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 drop shipping, even high ticket drop shipping. We have some, you know, you know, ones at the higher end of that, which are you know makes it you know, feel almost luxurious. Okay. Um, and then you know, most people don't want to solve the customer service um, paradigm, and I think that's a wonderful way to add value. And again, I'll go back and say that with the skill set that a corporate executive or a career professional has that's worked in a team to be able to direct people and put processes and procedures in place. This is something that you want to think really hard about. Drop shipping is a has a very discrete value chain. There are suppliers, there's website operations, there's customer service. Doesn't take a lot of great uh, technical expertise. It does take some organization. And I think that's you know, imminently, you know, uh, eminently solvable. Uh, the other uh, counterintuitive pro for this uh, strategy, Ryan, is that it is out of favor. And so, you know, go where go where people are, you know, less inclined to go. The darlings are, you know, FBA and probably Amazon Associates. Yeah. Um, and you know, drop shipping 
everyone hates because of the margins and the customer service issues. And yeah. I would tell you, I'll take the other side of that equation. And, you know, and, you know, when the world runs out of great brands and I'm holding a whole portfolio of great brands and boring products, yeah. you know, I, I, I hope to uh, prove people wrong. So yeah. that's where I'm, that's where I, where I shake out on that. Great. One. Great. Um, well, thank you for running through these business models. And again, let's just kind of tell people that um, there's more information up on, on your website that they'll be able to find, like just more detail of what we talked about today. Yeah. So, you know, so we did a, um, uh, a short uh, run through of the six business models in the framework, and I will shortly be producing a much longer narrative for people who want to hear, you know, kind of a much more detailed uh, rather than bite size. Um, you know, kind of opinion where I'll ramble on at ad, ad infinitum with, you know, notes that I have and give actual examples of sites that I've looked at or sites that we own and, you know, why things, you know, uh, you know, how kind of the inner workings are. So, uh, you know, if, if anyone's interested in that, you know, please join our mailing list and we'll be sending out something in the next six or eight weeks from, from now. Okay, great. Well, um, we should invite everyone back next week. We're, we're doing a deep dive just into high ticket drop shipping. It's an episode uh, you won't want to miss. So uh, thank you so much, Ian. This was great. And uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you, Ryan. It's a pleasure. Yeah, thanks. All right, folks, there you have it. That wraps up my conversation with Ian Bond of Professional Website Investors. He shared a ton of valuable insights and advice today on how to analyze different online business models using our evaluative framework. We also shared some tools and resources, which will all be linked up in the show notes at professionalwebsiteinvestors.com. I hope you enjoyed our conversation. Please consider subscribing, sharing with a friend, or leaving us a review in your favorite podcast directory. Until next time, best of luck in all that you do, and we look forward to seeing you on the next episode of the Professional Website Investor Podcast.